Right then, first session getting the rods back out since I've been back in England and I'm here to fish with a guy called John Bird. Fingers crossed, eh? You know, it's working all right, that'll do. That's all you need to know, innit? You ain't gonna trick up them uh, shy ones too easily, are you? You're just doing the same, I think. <laughs> when you get into that little zone, you get a clue or two and you start coming from one thing that leads to another. It come up and he's just like turning around laughing at me like, you know, I was like, just net it, net it. He's like, no, that ain't going nowhere, son. Lovely way to, uh... Welcome back to the UK. They'd left half a pig's head. He's like 200 yards away, and I could hear him go, Levy! Joe Dogs fishing in the moment is back. <laughs> well, that didn't take very long at all. We're in. <laughs> oh, mate, that is mad. That is so mad. She's massive. <laughs> Absolutely massive. And now I finally got my moment. Mega, mega creature from an amazing lake. Yo, yo, yo. Right then, first session, getting the rods back out since I've been back in England. Um, yeah, sort of struggled a bit to get the old motivation together, but I'm here and I'm now doing it. We're down in Kent and I'm here to fish with a guy called John Bird, who's a bit of an underground character from the scene. He's caught some phenomenal carp over the years and tends to keep himself to himself and sort of you know fishes waters that are a little bit under the radar these days um, so yeah looking forward to hearing some of his stories about some of the mega carp he's caught and obviously getting a bit of his enthusiasm as well because uh, he's a mega keen angler and like I say when I come back from these sort of trips I need to kind of get as much enthusiasm off of others as possible, you know, to fire myself up, ready for it all. So, I've got down here a couple of hours before John, because John couldn't get here till six o'clock. So I thought, well, I'll get down before the rush hour traffic and also the rush hour for obviously Friday evening at a lake, because that's obviously the busiest night of the week and people tend to come after work. Um, however, I've rocked up and there's already 11 cars in the car park, but there is another lake here as well. And the majority of them are on the other lake known as uh, Tonford. The one we're going to be fishing is called Swan. There's four anglers on there at the moment. I've done a lap and as I got down to the far end, walked into a swim, saw a little bit of movement, you know, I thought, no, there's no birds about, you know, waited, nothing else came up and um, I thought, well, that must have been a fish. So then I've walked sort of 40 yards around the corner onto the end bank where I've got a good view all the way up the lake and only stood there for about five minutes and one stuck its head out about 10 yards out. So I thought, right, let's get back up here, get my barrow loaded up and go and get that area sealed off. Wasn't going to get the rods out, I was just going to wait for John and um, let him choose or toss a coin or whatever, but you know, there's obviously fish up in that area, so it's a good starting point for us. However, I've gone to get my barrel out and realised that I've left my wheel at home. Massive, massive schoolboy error. Um, and you know, the fish just so happens to be at the far end of a long, thin lake, so... And I've also still got this rotator cuff injury. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my rucksack on my back and take my rod holder and walk, walk that down there um, because I think it's pretty safe around here, it's all sort of fenced off and that. And then come back, maybe get another few bits and bobs and then uh, wait for John to take the bed chair and have a bits and pieces. So yeah, can't believe I've done that. What an absolute donut. Got a power barra, <laughs> but I've not got a wheel. Wally, right. Oh, I need the exercise. Let's get going. Right, well, thankfully, there's a very nice chap called Lee just down the bank who lent me his barrow. So, um, yeah, saved me a lot of sweat and a lot of aching tomorrow. So cheers, Lee, top man. Um, right, John's turned up and we've just sat here for the last hour or so. I'll chuck my broiler up, or bivvy, should I say, just to keep my gear dry. And yeah, he was just about to go and get his stuff and we've just seen another one show straight in front of this swim, about 25 yards out. Wasn't a big fish, but definitely a carp. So it's the second one I've seen in this area. And the other one, which I mentioned earlier, was down off the end of those reeds there where there's a new swim that's been cut out. So John's gonna jump in there. Um, with regards to approach, personally, I don't see, I don't see that there's gonna be any value to sort of whipping the water to a foam to try and find some spots. I think, you know, potentially just gonna spook any fish out of this area. So 
three singles, maybe um, one on a stringer, like two or three bait stringer, or maybe, yeah, one on single, one on stringer, and one on a little bag of some oily ground bait that I've got with me. But literally just fishing for a bite, fishing for a drop, feel it through the water. Um, hopefully it's fairly clear out here, obviously it's still spring, so I'm not expecting there to be much weed, but you never really know. But yeah, hopefully if I can get a good drop in this area, might just fish two rods to be fair, it's probably more sensible. Um, well it's always hard isn't it, leaving the third one in the bag when you're allowed to use the third one. But yeah, two rods in that zone, maybe one out a little bit more to the left, and just fish for a bite. And I think we are up against the time now as far as the light is concerned, so I'm going to get sorted, John's going to get sorted, and if we don't get time to do any filming this evening, we'll catch up with you in the morning. Well used gear mate, eh? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's hanging in there. It's hanging in there alright. Just about. <laughs> hey, there we go the boys. So it's a good job I went with iron on you for a barrow then, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 I did. I've got one in the garden, but the boat don't open on my motor at the moment. So I couldn't even get, couldn't even get that in there. So we both ended up using Lee's barrow. Yeah. We're going to miss him on Sunday when he's not here. <laughs> I don't know. I think mean, I'll turn to do two trips carrying, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so it weren't the easiest, was it? Nah. Give me me uh, Nash Parrow barrow back at any boat. You'll see that whole thing I've got. He's just like, oh. It's just like an old builder's barrel with a sheet on top with Al for the barbecue in it. <laughs> if it ain't though. broke, it's quality though. <sighs> so I bet it's, uh, it's been a few years since you stepped on here, isn't it, John? Yeah, mate. I, ain't been for, pff, I don't know. I think the last time I really fished it, I only sort of, yeah, properly was um, I come down for a couple of nights with Johnny Mac years ago. That was when we was fishing Coninbrook, like, you know? It was 2005, I think. Yeah, it was and, uh, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, it was all right though, worked out okay. We ended up collaring that, um, ended up catching that old raster the next morning as well. Shame though, never got the pictures of that off John, but yeah, it looked mega when we had it, when I had it though, it's just like real like dark, you know. Mega old fish that one. Yeah, shame he's not in here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all subject. <laughs> We're on fish, so what's, uh, yeah, what's your plan of attack going to be? I don't know really, mate, to be fair. I'm just going to have a couple of casts, not many, just two or three casts quickly, see if I can't get a decent drop somewhere. Probably just fish, um, not singles, I'll put like, I don't know, a dozen round them tonight, round each rod. I've only got two rods though. Um, and yeah, that'll do, I think, for tonight. Sweet. Get up nice and early. You a bit of a bait man? Uh, yeah, yes and no. You know, a trip like this, maybe not, but... If I'm into something and get a bit going on, and, and what, what do you tend to use? Got anything particular? <sighs> well, literally, I've got no idea what you. Yeah, what even... all sorts really, mate. Just, you know, boilies and tigers, whatever. But I mean, like bait company wise, you got. Oh, sticky, yeah, yeah, sticky, yeah, yeah. They sort me out a nice and cheap bit of bait and all that. So yeah, that's all good. So Just sort of get a bit of that when I get it... a bit more of that if it's looking lightly. What's your favourites for them then? Like the krill, man. Yeah, that's a, that's the ways like you know. Oh, yeah, top bait in it. Yeah, yes and no. I use the manila a bit in the winter sometimes, but down like I generally fish down the river in the winter, and I just use that krill all the way through. It's fine, you know. They, say they tend to like it down the river a bit more than the um, bit more than a nutty one, like you know. But I don't know. Maybe it's different. But I, I haven't really done a lot down the lakes in the last few winters anyway. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, mate, I, know really. I know a few people to use it, and they all use it with massive confidence. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's it, isn't it? Bait, you and you know it's working all right. That'll do. That's all you need to know, isn't it? Don't even worry about that. But yeah, I don't, I don't really get on the maggots or anything like that. And I might, I mean, not that I wouldn't, but something like tonight, I'll just slip, sling out a couple dozen baits round and see what happens. Hopefully they'll be about in the morning, wouldn't they? <laughs> Tend to be a lot more of a food bait 
hook man, hook bait person, or do you use a bright fruity one? I like of using a bit of both. To be fair, you know, like one on one on each. Yeah. I'd have a bright one on the edge of a bit of bait or something, maybe, and then like a you know throw bait on the on the sort of on the baited spot. Depends, really, doesn't it? You know, nothing's ever set in stone. No. It's always pretty changeable. Um, but some know. people are, aren't they? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sort of just match the actual whatever all the time, don't they? I don't know, that's what it is. But yeah, it's, 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 it's all depends what the fish are up to, mate, doesn't it? You know, that's it. a lot of my fishing is really it's like stalking around in the afternoons and stuff, and you get a bit of a better idea then, don't you? Creeping in the edge and you know, I don't know, drop a tiger in or something like that. A couple of little bits of, you know, a little handful of emp or whatever. Not to make it too technical, do we? It's yeah, expensive not, otherwise. Not so blatant as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, nice and subtle. In the edge sometimes you really notice it, don't you? How they shy off sort of yeah, big yeah. round baits and Yeah. Yeah, it's an eye blatant. opener in it, you know, you can they they do eat the bait and everything, don't they? You know, everywhere else. But that fishing in the edge stuff is a bit more subtle in it. All the time really. If you ain't gonna get you ain't gonna trick up them uh, shy ones too easily, are you? If you're just doing the same off it. <laughs> Right then, John, the sun is shining. It's looking a bit more promising and far more comfortable. Yeah, it's looking a bit carpier again now, isn't it? After all that horribleness last night. That's it, yeah, this morning windy. as well was just grim. Cold as well, but like now, yeah, it's lovely now, isn't it? Tell's just had a couple, he's just left here, and he? Left us to it. <laughs> what do they say? Don't look, look a gift horse in the mouth or yeah, something exactly like that. Yeah, exactly that. It was busy when we got here, wasn't it? And now it's gone a bit quieter, and hopefully we'll have a bit of joy a bit later on. So we've moved our gear around to opposite and sort of to the left of where we were. Um, like, like John said, you know, this guy that was in here had a couple of fish this morning. He's just pulled off. Um, so yeah, it was. You know, we had, didn't have any other signs to go on, did we? We had a look about. No, we had, we had a look at the other lake as well, didn't we? But then we come back here and it all sort of changed and it looks looks all right now. It looks looks good for it. Different day. Yeah, wind's puffing down the other end, but. There's still a few about up here, obviously. Yeah, well, it's a cold wind as well, isn't it? Where yeah. we're on the back of the wind in the sunshine, so... Yeah, a bit of a fake one sometimes, isn't it, this early on? You can get down there thinking they're all turn up and, and they don't, you know? But no. I, think, I think we'll be all right here. Yeah, well, I've just chucked my gear in that swim up there, which is right on the back of the wind, and yeah. I can imagine it's got to be, you know, quite warm up it's there. It's a few degrees margins. warmer, yeah, 100%. So, yeah, hopefully there's one or two creeping about. Um, got any kind of game plan then? Not really, just some small stuff out there, I suppose, you know, just some smaller boilies. Um, yeah, and just go from that, really. Bit of crumb, maybe, in a couple of, in a bag or something, one of them. I'm not too sure, really, just yet. I think, I think I'll keep them on the sort of choddy set up at the moment. I'll have a little feel around out there, make my mind up then, you know. I haven't had a chance to have a chuck about yet, so I don't really know what's going on out there. Yeah, well, last night, two of my rods, I kind of just flopped them out to where I'd seen fish with solid yeah. bags, kind of, you know, just trying to not make any disturbance and hope that, that yeah. was fishing, but, you know, sometimes you feel a lot more confident when you found a nice yeah, spot, Yeah, you've got you? to sort of get it all settled in your own mind, haven't you? You know, if it's like, if you're happy with it all, don't up for a couple of casts about rather than just one, you know, sling them out there and just hope for the best. That's it, I'll yeah. have a little chuck about, it's what, it's getting like mid-afternoon nearly, isn't it, or nearly there, like. So uh, it's got plenty of time yet, haven't we? Cool. All right, well, for now then, 
I'll let you uh, get yourself sorted. Yeah, I'll no go worries, up there, man. get myself set up as well, and then I'll yeah. come back down and I'd like to sort of pick your brains and hear a couple of your stories because obviously we've been fishing ahead of a long time and yeah. caught some special ones. So there's yeah, a couple of particular ones. Yeah, enough. A couple of particular ones I'd uh, quite like to hear the story of if yeah, you're up mate. for that. Yeah, of course. Sweet. All right, mate, right. let's try and catch a carp then. Fingers crossed, eh? <laughs> catch up soon. <laughs> nice one, mate. Food out of the tooth. <laughs> <laughs> right, finally we get down to uh, actually sitting down and having a little chat. Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? We've been to mess about a little bit, haven't we? Been in sort of nearly 24 hours now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, obviously last night time was against us with the light, and then this morning it was raining, and then we needed to try and you know get on a, an area that looks like it had more potential, which we've done. You've got your rods out. Yeah, it's looking I've good. I've up a couple of spots. Um, yeah. I've left my rods in for now, just to leave the lines out for, for now, and then uh, yeah, I'll flick them out a bit later. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we've got two out here, haven't we? Looking uh, looking bang on, really. Mate, you had a couple this morning. It's uh, on this spot, didn't it? It's a nice lake, isn't it? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's good. Quite clear, quite weedy. There's a few nice ones in here, isn't there? You know, like from what we've sort of found out since we've been here. So you've done a little bit of time on there in the past? Yeah, right? years ago, years ago, when there was like the, the old rasta was in here and all that. And it's a mad old carp, wasn't mad it? Mad old carp, mate, yeah, big old black thing that was like, he's a proper old, old, old ancient thing, that one. But yeah, so like, that one is a big common in here back then, and, you know, years ago, but that one died. But there's still plenty of other ones in here. Yeah, some nice like mid to upper 30 commons and stuff and like, Seems like there's a few that have been on the missing list for a while as well. Yeah, it? it does, yeah. There's a few that don't seem to get caught very often and like yeah, they, they seem to be the, the jewels in the crown, so to speak. Yeah, but these, these days. By the sounds of it, the last few years it hasn't had a hell of a lot of pressure and then no. sort of obviously since these guys are taking it over. Yeah, yeah, the Kent Wildfowlers, fishing. like yeah, they've taken it over from like mid Kent now, aren't they? So like yeah, they're just sort of doing a bit of work and stuff, and it's all looking quite nice down here, isn't it? Yeah, finally the time the of year out. as well, you know, because it's still early, isn't it? Yeah. So buds and that coming out, and uh, yeah, a bit of blossom on the old hawthorn trees, which is always a yeah, yeah. Time, wind's still a bit chilly, isn't it? But it's right, mate. The daylight's the day, isn't it? It's just like you can wish for more, can we? No, it's lovely. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd sort of go back to the sort of early days really to introduce you to the viewers a bit yeah so yeah you grew up sort of in kent is that right yeah in, in, just in Asheville, up the road like yeah yeah yeah, yeah sort of cut your teeth on what kind of waters um like the place we had to wander around the place earlier didn't we joe um just up there we called a the predator lake next to that so uh, another little pit called griffins like but that's, that's all shut there's no fish in there these days well, no fishing allowed there these days either um but that was like sort of a later, I don't know, 15, 16, I was sort of fishing there until I was about 17, 18 maybe. Um, yeah, lovely, lovely little gravel pit that. Did look nice. Some yeah. amazing car old, old carp in there, like, yeah, across from the fence, like, you know, can't be crossing over there. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, some nice ones. Caught my first 30 pounder from there. Yeah, mega old fish that was, like, you know, but um, yeah, you know, unfortunately the fishing all stopped and that was that. But um, I was sort of fishing Coninbrook by then. Right, right. You know, so we you sort of did go in there. In when, what, relatively yeah. early days of your When I was about country. 18, 19, you know, when I could get first get a ticket, really. We had, sort of ended up having a go up there, because to me it was it really then? local up there, like, as well. And, um, you know, there was never really many fish in there, but they were all sort of mega proper ones, you know? Like, the old two-tone weren't 50 pound or nothing quite yet then. But there was some other amazing fish in there as well, you know, a lot of them, and it was um, yeah, really, really good. That what, long common and that long common, scaly. Nice one, it was like just the original sort of twenty odd. I think a few had gone in from the um, like the little lake by then, you know, by my time. It wasn't like I was down there from the very start by any stretch, you know, of, of like Collingbrook being discovered or anything. But yeah, by like sort of ninety nine, two thousand, I was sort of fishing there. Yeah, and it's great though. I, I sort of loved it, you know. I mean, I'd... it was really, really hard. Don't get me wrong, and you know, it's a bit run before you can walk sort of thing. But I don't know. I just, I just really loved it down there, and I never really fished for lots of fish at a time over the sort of prevailing years and all that. And I just, yeah, I just really loved it down there. It's great, 
group of guys and it was um, yeah, it was an education to say the least. That's one thing I've heard about the place. I've not really I haven't read loads of uh, books and stories on it, but mm. you know, over the years the few people I've spoke to who've fished the place. Um, it sounded like there was a great kind of social scene down there. Yeah. A lot of respect between the anglers. Yeah, it was very much like that. The camaraderie was like, I don't think we'll ever get anything like that again, you know. Because to be fair, we sort of left our own devices down there, relatively speaking. And um, yeah, and it was all good though. It was all good fun. Nothing got out of hand. And the bites at night were so rare and random. It wouldn't really happen that much. It's all pretty safe, like have a barbie and a bit of a meet up in the evening. But it was great fishing though, you know, it was the right leveller, for sure, you know, it was so sort of, hard, sort of hard down there. It was really like, you know, sitting there thinking you might catch two or three a year if you're lucky, if you got the chances, because it sort of got quite busy by then. And as, as well as like the low stock, I mean, it was also super rich, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 super rich with all the food, you know, all the natural food in there, the snails and the, and the caddis and everything else. You know, and the big big fly hatches off there. It was it was just super abundant with food. Yeah, you could never you wouldn't really want to put a lot of bait in there back in them days. But these days it's a bit different. You know, they do catch them on a fair bit of bait out of there. So being up against that, you know, taking that into mind, and then being up against you know some of the best anglers in the game. Yeah, you sort of um, you're up against it there. Yeah, you? yeah, it was a bit like that. But I sort of. Um, I sort of, I don't know, took it on the chin, so to speak. You know, I sort of thought, this, as hard as this might be, it's like the education I was getting through it, through everyone else, and the, you know, the things I was seeing and that, it was just like a steep, really like quick learning curve kind of thing, you know? What would you say the key things you learnt were that you kind of picked um, up from that? Just to keep it all basic, really, as basic as you can, and keep it like real, as natural, like, you know, follow your instincts and that, get used to tuning into that sort of thing and like just simplifying things, not get too caught up in like baiting campaigns and this, that and the other. So we're just seizing the little moments when they were there, like, you know, when they'd sneak in the edge. Because predominantly that's sort of my kind of fishing, that sort of thing. I'm not one to fish out in the middle all the time. I mean, I will if they're out there, but it's not as interesting, you know, in my eyes, a lot of that. And you said they're tuning in, like tuning into a lake is one of the biggest kind of keys to success, really. Yeah, of course, yeah, you can't, you know, it's just sort of, you, you, you can't really, you've got to scratch below the surface, haven't you? You know, when you get into that little zone, you get a clue or two and you start going from one thing that leads to another and then you build a bigger picture and then you have a couple of results. That's what it's all about, really, isn't it? Building up that little, them little plans and all that, getting them all latched and they normally come to fruition, don't they? If you put enough work in, generally the thing, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, obviously you ended up catching two tone. Killed yeah, him. eventually. He got him on the bank, that one. Killed him. the story a bit, but um, it was a British record, wasn't it? It was, yeah, at the time, yeah. Wow. I mean, it was a long old process, and I'd never sort of gone on there to think I'm going to catch a British record or anything like that. But, um, yeah, the day, it all, you know, that night it all worked out, and the day, you know, we'd done the pictures and that. So leading up to the capture then, tell us the story. Well... I've sort yeah, I mean, I've been over this story a couple, a couple of times before, but it's, it's so, so relevant. Ten years of uh, <laughs> yeah, leading up to we, it. Yeah, no, let's not go there. But, like, you know, that weekend, well, I suppose when I did catch it, it was, um, yeah, it was just sort of getting uh, busy again, you know. It was just a lot of people turning up again, sort of early, early April. So I think it was the 6th when I caught it, 6th of April in the end. But um, I got down there on a the Friday and there was, like, there's quite a lot of fish becoming quite apparent quite quick. Like there's a lot of the fish in the in the new lake, what they call the new lake, like in the back lake. And it was like, well, if they're in there, like they're waking up a bit more and they're following the wind and stuff. And uh, I couldn't, it didn't really have many options, but it, you know, sort of knew they were in there, so I had to go on the back of the wind off the fish a bit. And then that's all I could really do. So I had a few beers in the and a bit of barbecue and all all that stuff that night. And um, but in the morning though, I've noticed uh, one of the guys had gone. So I managed to sort of move round to the opposite end of the lake, what bird point and all that, and that was, that was all quite nice there. But then there was a group of fish show in there as well. It's only about six in the morning or something. Um, but then the other guy was packing up where this other group of fish was, like Trevor and the, like yeah, he's, he's a good old boy, Trevor. And uh, yeah, he's, um, he sort of left. I saw he was going. I thought, well, if I don't move now, someone else is going to move. So it's like highly sort of competitive down there, you know, if someone saw a little window there, they'd, they'd be on it straight away. And so I thought, no, I'll, I'll move twice now. So I've done that by about half seven in the morning. And um, yeah, I ended up in this swim, like this middle road swim. 
um, on, on the new lake. And uh, yeah, and, like, throughout the day they were just sort of showing to my right and to my left. And I sort of got rod each on them sort of spots. And it was just like the rod in the middle, really. It's got that only about 30 odd yards out or whatever. And um, yeah, I thought I'd leave that out there on his own, you know, it's a bit, somewhere a bit different off the pack sort of thing. And yeah, then lo and behold, it sort of rattled off about half two that, the following morning. And it was right in this mad old, like, moon phase time, you know, it's right on this, like, bang on a new moon in this transit window of like an hour or two. And uh, yeah, it got really, really cold, you know, I thought, freezing, like, really, really bad. And, um, but yeah, and then it rattled off and a uh, big old scrap and that was it, like, you know. I actually looked around when I was netting it, I think I've said this before in, in something else, like, that uh, you know, I sort of turned around and think, you know, am I netting it for now? Like, it's nothing else there, like. <laughs> Thankfully, it was just me that day. Because yeah, you'd netted it how many times? Oh, loads of times. Seven like, times on the bounce. Seven times it? on the bounce so over you... a couple of years. And a lot of people who sort of know me, they, they know that they know that I used to live in the house right next to the lake. Right. In Joe's old, like, converted barn. It's a beautiful place. And I was lucky enough to live there for, like, three or four years. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I'd end up seeing the old two-tone quite a lot. <laughs> it's quite a mad old fish, that one. But obviously, you know, the, the fire was still burning, you know. Yeah. It, it, time after time. It's, yeah, you know, it's like, just one of them. It was such a, a random creature anyway. If it weren't really like a lot of the other fish, you could sort of target them to a degree or do, do things to sort of up your chances of catching them ones. Like that long common, for instance, he'd always be like in the edge all the time. But, um, but two-tone was just random, generally. There weren't a lot of people that caught it by design. You just sort of like fish for bites, really. That's the only thing you could do. You might as well just fish for bites all the time off whatever you see. And eventually it'd turn up. And that's how it turned up for a lot of people, really. There wasn't really many that did catch it by design. I could think of a few, like Laney and that, when he, uh, when he caught it, when the pump was going. And, you know, it was a big slick of... You know, kept burrowing all the, all the mud and the clay and stuff, and it was just big slick in this corner with a big pump going, draining the other lake. Nice. And like all the fish were there, you know. Nice. And then, and, prime you know, opportunity. Prime opportunity, yeah. And it, it's not something that had ever happened. It did, it did happen a few more times, and everyone used to, you know, capitalise on it when it did, but that was like the original time. And like, yeah, and he sort of had it off really, just heard it jump out a bit more off the group yet again, sort of thing jump out, I don't know if he heard it in the night or in the, you know, the day or whatever, but yeah, he sort of got a bait out there and it rattled off the next morning and it was and it was that one, but so that was quite interesting. You must have been there at the time when they cut the, the other lake in, didn't Yeah, you? that was a lot later on that, so yeah, it was quite a bit later on, I'm not too sure exactly when it was, you know. And how did that change the dynamics of the fishing? Right? Yeah, it changed it quite a lot, to be fair, and, and you know, you've got to imagine They've been living in, it's like there's someone living in this like old mansion or something and half of it's been bricked up forever. And then all of a sudden like someone's knocked, knocked a wall through and then you've got another half of a, a you know, great big mansion to explore or whatever. And they it's just, rich, they, yeah, and it was rich grub. and full of so many <laughs> different features and that as well. It's ultra weedy again, but it was all, it was, used to be two lakes and there's like a road that split, splits them up and that. And, this, and that was sort of all changed a bit and became one, but that road was still there. So it's like it's up and down. It was a bit more, a lot more features to it than the, like the old lake, you know. So it's lovely new playground. For so them. yeah, like a new playground. Yeah, they were all over it. Like, and to be fair, people we should have capitalised on it a little bit more. A few people did, and they had a few. Oh, yeah, I had a few. I had a couple of like, you know, I'd brace a couple of times over there early days, which is pretty rare. But um, yeah, they loved it. Like, you know, they still do. It's uh, yeah, it's good. So how big was it when you caught it? Two times? Mate, it was. Um, I think it was, like we weighed it and it was like 67 or just like hovering just over it, but we settled on 67 and it, and it was it was mad. Like I had to send the scales off to trading standards to get it verified, like it's weights and measures things. And um, and yeah, and it came back and it was like 67, uh, 66 pound 14 or 15. I can't actually remember what the certificate thing says now. Is it 14 or 15? I think I know it was either one ounce or two ounces out like the more scales, you know, and I thought well, they're pretty accurate, aren't they, over that, over that sort of weight. Wow, yeah. Mm, yeah, it's huge. Huh? Absolute donkey. Absolute beast, whale. yeah. It's a huge <laughs> thing. Like, it's un unbelievable, really. You have to manhandle it. But the buzz like, was pretty intense, wasn't it, after all that time? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. You know, I had to uh, drop to the knees and have a little moment, you know. It's all sort of a bit, over not overwhelming, but, you know, euphoric. Yeah. yeah it's all right, yeah, it was good. And relief. And relief, yeah, it was like, it's done now. It's all sort of, it's game over sort of thing. 
and I'd, I'd spent a lot and I'd been quite a few other places in my time but I did spend a lot of time down Coninbrook sort of by the end thinking that by the end I'd sort of just go down there as and when it was when I felt it was sort of due to get caught you know which was quite accurate really mm. over the last you know remaining few years but yeah I've been a few other places but yeah to eventually it actually rolled over in the net you know because I did sort of like we said earlier I definitely like lost it I'm sure at least twice over them years but um you know when your name's on it your name's on it isn't it Top yeah, it was, it was mad. Yeah, it was quite. Yeah, it was pretty bonkers. Good angling, and the other one that I know that you're quite famous for was one of the best carp that's ever lived in the country, uh, the, the Black Mirror, the old Black Mirror. The old Black Mirror. So was yeah, that wow. Where you went after Conybrook? No, no, no. That was before. Right. That okay. was like before I'd sort of caught two tone. It's only like the year before, but it was one of them times when I'm having a bit of a break from Coninbrook. I sort of planned that year. I thought, no, you know what, I'm not staying here down in the spring, wherever everyone else. You need a fresh buzz, or fresh. I suppose you're going through the motions. Yeah, you way. do. And then, and, you know, when you sort of caught a fair few of them, you'd sort of wait, you know, and think generally that would get caught a bit later on after a fair few had been out two time. And I sort of thought, well, I'll wait. And while I'm doing that, I'll just go up the mirror and have a go for that, you know. In, but in reality, I would have just, if I'd never caught it so quick, I would have probably just stayed up there and probably never gone back to Coninbrook, like, you know. Maybe, who knows. But um, yeah, I did uh, go up there beforehand, before I'd finished Coninbrook sort of thing. And then that spring, I'd just gone up there and I was just got these, like, it was, I was just sort of blessed, really blessed, you know. It was like the complete opposite of Coninbrook for me. I got, um, I got quite lucky, well, got presented a lot of opportunities really early up there. Come on then, tell us a story. Yeah, and that was it, like, <laughs> I sort of, I don't know really where to start. You don't really exciting. need to go from Just the beginning. Yeah, exactly that. It was so exciting, so, like, captivating. It's like you'd be completely drawn into it like, up there. You'd just have, it'd just like, it'd pull you in, like you'd be under its spell and that'd be it, because it was like a different world altogether up there. It's like being in, like, the jungle almost, you know? It's a mad old place up there, with its own sort of vibe, its own kind of weird, intense thing. You know, you shouldn't really be there and all that. You're running the risk a little bit, but, you know, hey-ho. Um, and was it like, you know, you're looking over your shoulder a lot, or were you Yeah, really you had to pay attention, away? yeah, for sure. Yeah, but in you, in you go about certain things at, at certain times of day, you know, it's not about you wouldn't have to have your rods out all, all day, every day or whatever, you know, you just sort of wait till the chances of the time was sort of right, get your rods back out again spend the day wandering about maybe it's, yeah it's just uh, multiple little things you have to sort of do and be aware of rather than a normal lake we could just turn up and fish and just sit back and chill like we are now you know you have to be a bit vigilant you know to be a bit careful up there so did you like stash gear in that up there then no i'd never really left any gear up there what i'd sort of do i just really never took a lot up there obviously it was um i didn't really need a lot to be fair i mean i just take, like, it would literally be like a rucksack, rod bag with two little rods and one big rod. You know, two big rods and one little rod by the end of it, you know. Um, but, yeah, it's just out the rucksack and the bucket that like, I was on about earlier, like, with the, with the boat in it and the, and the oars and the life jacket and the markers and stuff, all, like, within the small bucket. Right. Sort of, and the pump, yeah, so you just pull that through the brambles without, without killing it sort of thing. Um, yeah, and just sort of like five litres of water and that was it really. But I did, I was lucky enough because a lot of people did stash gear up there over the years. And um, and some people sort of, you know, did sort of just abandon a few bits and bobs up there. They'd sort of done their time and, and they'd sort of almost forgot about their few things that were up there. And I'd found a bed chair pretty early on, so I was making use of that <laughs> rather than the floor. Because I'd done that for a night or two and that, you know, that weren't the one, mate, they'd been doing stuff like that. It's not, not, not particularly pleasant at all. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, so that was it really. I'd only, because the bed chair was there, and then like my little brolly thing or whatever that I had, I did sort of leave that up there. I never really used it though, to be fair, kept under the stars most of the time. Nice. Um, yeah, and then that was it really, so I didn't really need a lot. And it was quite a long walk. I used to go in the other way, I used to go in the long way, like from like the lagoon right round the top and then back down and then go round the mirror then, you know, so you know, it's a long old trot that was. So what, did, was good. what did you learn up there that led up to the capture then? Oh, there's, there's loads of things. I was, this is what I mean, I just got so many opportunities. Within the first, it wasn't actually the first day, 
I've been asked about this before and I've sort of got it wrong, but it was like the second morning on the, like the Sunday, I'd got there on a Friday, met my pal up there and that, or a couple of my pals, and we'd gone up, up the, up the um, like, cafe and that on the Saturday. And we'd got back Saturday evening, like me and me and my other mate, what I, we'd, we'd sort of found a couple in this corner, so we sort of done the night in that corner. They left on the Sunday. And then by like 11 o'clock on the, on the Sunday morning, I was sort of really the only one there. And um, as far as I knew anyway, I mean, you'd never know 100% <laughs> over there, but... Yeah, and then I sort of found them, you know, I see the Black Mirror come in with this other great big common and um, this other, right, you know, 20 odd pounder and it was, it was just magical, like, you know, just think, wow, look at them, like. Yeah. And I watched them all sort of morning and, and during all day, really. And uh, yeah, I sort of learnt a lot and then never had any sort of chances fishing for it that day. It was just like sunbathing. Uh, that same sort of thing, really, early, early April, not quite as early, sort of maybe like mid-April. Yeah, and, um, and then I was just like, you know, so enthusiastic, had to buzz for it properly to get back the following week during the week. I can't remember how it all went, like the trips and that. It wasn't just weekends, it was like the odd day here and there, but it all just sort of added up, like in the end, like 11 days, nine nights, and I got my little chance and had my bite, and that was him, like, you know. But, really? Yeah, but it did, like, going on from that, I did sort of nearly every time find it eventually you know to just take a lot of hard work finding it sometimes and um and i'd feed them under this snag tree and stuff then i'd think right i know they're all under here so i can go out there and get my boat blown up go out there drop a bit of bait and stuff mark up the spots I'd start sort of start cleaning them spots up it was only on the last two or three trips i'd actually sort of done that and that was the way i'd sort of realized i weren't really going to catch it out the edge quite as early or if i'd be really lucky if i did and in the mornings they were sort of showing out on this spot, that's where the feeding was going on, like out in the lake, you know, out of a quite a well-known swim. But they were there, like harvesting that eel grass sort of area where it was a bit shallower and it, all the weed was beginning to come up properly. And that was it, like a little breakfast table every day, like for the foreseeable future. And yeah, and um, I'd go out there and I'd break it out a couple of times and it got to that last time and I just, I sort of knew, you know, I thought I've got to be there on that Friday. After what I got beat, whoever's there and just get there in that swim, and because the spot was changing and like yeah, and lucky enough for me, I did get in there, and um, yeah, and I cast that rod out to that spot and it had all changed like so much, in there. and the, the way that that fish was like that particular year, I don't know, if, I don't really think it was like that all the time, but that particular year I was fishing it and I was feeding them, it'd come in, it'd push all the others out the way almost like and it'd be like you know it's all mine. <laughs> and, he'd, and he'd be eating, trying to eat all the bait and he really would get quite aggressive about wow. it. It's quite mad to watch, like, yeah. And, um, and I thought he's got to have been like, that's him, like, you know, he's got to have been him the, the most out there having it. And yeah, and it, I think in hindsight probably was like, you know. And, um, but yeah, that, that was it. The following, the following morning on the Saturday, I'd, I'd got the rods out perfect on the Friday, luckily. And uh, yeah, and I just, I always remember that. I've just been up the, up the bushes into the toilet quickly and, uh, and I'd had the bite then like so I had to come running back jump over the bushes into the peel the netting off the rods and that and I was like shit you know it's the little rod not the big ones <laughs> and uh, yeah it was quite a big old epic battle ensued after that yeah but I sort of knew it was got it's got, it that one you out know, the you, boat battle no 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 out the boat course, I managed yeah. to cart him in like from about 75 yards out on my little nine foot rod and that but it was it was quite a scrap yeah so it was good though. Squeaky bum moments when oh, you knew what it mate, was. Yeah, they're, like, they're lucky for me, like my pal, like Lee, you know, what he turned up. And, um, you know, rapid, thankfully, and he just jumped straight in, got grabbed the net, and like, yeah, I always remember him, you know, I was just coming in, I'm like, it's definitely him, like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't know about all that. And uh, it come up, and he was just like turned around laughing at me, like, you know, I was like, just net it, just net it. He's like, no, nah, that ain't going nowhere, son. Just like <laughs> scooped him up, yeah. But I don't know, mate, it was mega. Wow. Yeah, that was like probably, yeah, I'd say there isn't really a most memorable capture, is there, for anyone, I don't think. But it's, you know, it's up there with one or two of them. Yeah. Definitely. Like, yeah. It was just so amazing that for it to all to come together how it did, it was really, A, I was really like fortunate. But what then. Was the what a fish, mate, that so was, you, you know, and like so it? many, such an iconic fish, wasn't it, or, or is still, like, you know, and for what it sort of stood for, how it was, it wasn't, it was just, it had everything you'd ever want in a carp, you know, and all the aspects to it, which made it a bit more awkward, 
you know, you really had to dedicate yourself to the cause if you were going to have a go. Mm. So you weren't though, just turning up and doing, you know, going about it in a normal kind of fashion. You just you couldn't do it. Everything had to be really sort of calculated up there. But yeah, it was great though. And how big was that when you caught it? Um, Not, uh, you know, weight. 50, yeah, 51 and a half pounds, yeah, in the end. Nice. But it was huge, like, it's, like it was just, it reminded me of like Two Tone, and Two Tone was loads bigger by then, but it was like, it, it still had that big diamonds kind of shape to it. And I went somewhere not, not long after that year, which, which held another one, which sort of had that sort of diamond like shape in it, which looked a bit like the old Black Mirror, like, you know. Did you catch that? No, and I never caught that one, uh, unfortunately. Whether it's still about, I don't think it is. I think that's long gone, to be fair, that one. Well, we don't want to end the story on a sour note. No, Two no, not that one. epic carp, mate, and yeah. absolute monsters. And they, yeah. Yeah, classic. They, they were, I was being, you know, very lucky. But there again, you know, I did put the work in. I mean, like everyone does, didn't they? When you eventually get... It's a lot of hard work goes into these things. Yeah. You know, and a lot of time, people don't really see that, do they? No, that's it. A lot of time and dedication and... Mm. Uh, even yeah, though the time scales of each of them fish was so different, you know, that one was like literally over four or five weeks, the Black Mirror, and then it was really kind of lucky, my chances were there and that was it. Well, yeah, but I could have right. been there for years. But the buzz is just as good, The buzz, it? yeah, exactly, oh yeah, exactly, if not more, almost. Yeah. But um, yeah, the two-tone it, and then that sort of, you know, it was only right that it took me that long, really, and I'm glad it did in ways, because if I'd have turned up when I was 18, 19 years old, and caught a 54 pound or 60 pound, you know, whatever it was by then. You know, that might spoil it all a little bit, you know? Mm. So in the end, I was quite grateful it took me a long time. Oh, well, no complaints about this weather this afternoon, mate. It's absolutely glorious. Yeah, it's mega, isn't it? I love spring days like this. Yeah, it? it's finally, it feels like it's finally here, doesn't it? You know, we're here doing it now. We've come out of that winter. It's like the last little bit of winter, isn't it? It's like it's feeling like this morning. Horrible northeasterly wind of all that, you know, that horrible rain and stuff. It's cold, wasn't it, last night? It's all right now, though. It's lovely. Yeah. The sun's just about to go down, isn't it? A bit bright still, but... I imagine they've been moving about a bit today, although we've not seen that many shows. We've sort of nah, they're up and about though, aren't they? You know Potential well active, the car are about. We're all right, mate. We're on for one tonight, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Awesome. Right, well, another thing I wanted to sort of talk to you about was, um, you know, a lot of the fishing you do these days, or have done sort of since sort of the Black Mirror days, has kind of been off the beaten track a bit. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I've always been a bit like that, you know. I've always liked my fishing nice and quiet. And, and like, something about it has to be a bit different, generally. I don't like it if, where it's all, you know, generally, as a general rule, I just don't like it where it's all too set out, it's busy. It, you know, everything's kind of, you know, a lot of these places, it's all kind of known, you know, it's nothing worse in my mind. You turn up and you find out about so-and-so fish gets caught from here and this and that and it, you know it's all like this kind of set pattern and to me you know it just detracts from the actual like essence of angling itself you know sometimes it can be a little bit free set up you know but yeah I, I love all that sort of um sneaking about it's just another little element to it all isn't it and it's, it's just there's something about you know at the end of the day you're not doing any harm to anyone you're probably doing the place a favor in ways you know keeping an eye on places and stuff and Hell of an adrenaline buzz, isn't it, when you're creeping about them sort Yeah, because you really, you know, a lot of, you don't really want to get caught at all. You know, and there's a, the odd time I have been, but you normally know, you can blag it a little bit and get get around it. Not, and sometimes, if you if you play your cards right, you know, it can work in your favour. Well, they say you can get away with anything once in life if you can plead ignorance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you you know, once you push it beyond that, then, you know, you, you're pushing, you're testing it to the limit, and, and then things, you know, they sort of... Uh, they they break and then you know you ain't you ain't getting there again anymore like you know you've had your chance and it was game over like you know but um a lot of these things you generally find a way around it if you do get caught or, or get out of it a little bit you've got to be sort of you use your uh, wits a little bit at the time haven't you but it's all right generally just don't get caught you know <laughs> <laughs> it's uh yeah no so i do like all that sort of thing yeah so obviously we can't talk about you know particular venues and whatever but when you are fishing these types of venues yeah i mean there's nothing better than sort of you know knowing that there's no one else fishing the place is yeah it? when you're applying bait you know that that's... Yeah, it's, it, yeah in that respect you know it's it's, it's it counters 
a lot of the awkwardness because you know for peace of mind that what you're getting up to is not getting exploited you know it's not, you're not treading on anyone's toes either you're doing it all just brand new for you and it's and it's all there no one's really going to mess it up for you but then it, it's a bigger price to pay really you know a lot of these venues they're so <coughs> tricky or times in between the chances are very like narrow windows you know but a lot of these sort of places you're not fishing all the time anyway you know you're not there all the, every weekend or you sort of build it up and then you, when things are starting to look lightly you get you go you know you might do a trip or two then when so, it's everything's bang on so have you got like a, a you know a rough kind of formula that you use when it comes to pre-baiting as in you know yeah, yes and no really there's nothing's ever set in stone you know I, I don't really work like that it's just whatever your gut tells you to do at the time you know but then building it up you are right you need to um you've got to start somewhere and if you've got nothing to go on you've got to start you got you've got to make something and uh yeah i don't really go in heavy on the bait until i know where they are well, you know where the fish are where they're going to be or might you know potentially turn up and i'll have a good check about of the area first because a lot of these times you know a lot of times these kind of spots they might already be there you know, and if you find them and you get a good little area, you might not need to prep it quite as much as you might have imagined, you know. Because so I think a lot of the time people think, no, they've got to, like, I've got to do it all from scratch. I've got to put a load of bu buckets of bait in here over X amount of weeks or months and stuff. And you like, if you time it right, you might only need to like put a pouch full of bait over there in your rook bait and catch one straight away. Yeah, it's, it's a very fine line to know between like, how much, how committed you've got to be to do all this baiting up really because sometimes you really don't need, even need to do it but it does pay off when you do you are right when it's quiet and you can do it and you, and you sort, of, sort of generally build it up with um depends what time of year but i like to start with like really not any bait bit of emp maybe and just put a lot of salt and stuff like that what the like himalayan yeah thing? like the proper big like big chunks as well like not just like silly little ground up bits and that it just sort of melts pretty quick if the water's warm enough and what like a few kilos on the spot yeah or? yeah maybe it depends even if i have to if i have to go out there in the boat and have a look at it and see whether it warrants it and stuff i, I don't know it just, there's so many factors but um yeah a lot of the time you just got to go with what's happening and what you can sort of see might develop you know and then, and then you get a good idea of what bait you really need depending upon how much weed there is and all that but yeah i don't really go full tilt for months on end baiting up some spot on that you know maybe you should sometimes but and i think a lot of the time you can make it really expensive for yourself you know? yeah do you tend to use like a mixture of baits then when you're trying to get a spot going yeah 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 small stuff to start with i have put a few boilies in always put a few boilies in there from the start really but if, it, if it's predominantly like something that needs cleaning off, so you can cast to it easy. If you get you know, a tensor or, or a carp, you have to get the rod back out there by casting really quick in, you know, in the middle of the night and that. You want it pretty pretty clear so you, you know you're fishing effectively. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's an hard one to judge. Sometimes you can use loads, loads of bait and build it up. But, but generally, I do like to get the spot clear, then ease back on the particle and that go in with the with the boiled baits or the tigers as well and just stick to like bigger items by then the spots getting clearer you know you keep casting to it like, like we were saying earlier like we, you know with the black mirror and that get back into casting out into that spot and it's all changed you know you're onto a winner you don't need to keep putting buckets of that on there then maybe i mean sometimes you might with one particular fish and stuff if, especially in the edge if you're watching it and then if you know if it's coming in and out and if it's already visiting it then it's sort of it's half done already, isn't it? And then you need to sort of judge when you need to actually get the rod out and fish for them. But yeah, so I, I get through. I don't really get through masses of bait, but I will put it in when I need to. Yeah, it's all just all sort of based by like you know minute by minute, and it? it just mm. depends what happens all the time. Yeah, there's no hard. Sense there is no there's no setting stone stuff for me any, ever. Like, you know, I like to just see exactly what's going on. But then you've got to keep the consistency going, haven't you? You got to be there. To, to know which it's no good doing it every other week or something you'd never know what had gone on I mean, being able to check spots you know is such a key thing isn't it yeah if you yeah, know yeah. they've been in and had that bait then you know it's yeah it. especially if you know somewhere you're not meant to be then you know you're sort of already breaking the rules isn't it but you're all you know you get you, a lot of these places if you want to have a look you just go out in your boat and have a look in the middle of the night or whatever 
and if you can, if the water's clear and you can see and it all changing, then you know, then it's going on, isn't it? But yeah, some. This is that's the other aspect to all this kind of fishing. You can sort of do what you want to a degree. Yeah, that's something I only kind of clocked on to uh, last year when I was fishing this little shallow lake that you could use a boat with, and mm. that's how much more you can see with a torch at night, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, spot, yeah. You know, every mm. little bit of bait and... Yeah, it just emphasises it, doesn't it? You know, You've if the water's no... got that certain clarity to it, you can just get look right in there then. It's like an open window, isn't it? No light reflection, you know, nah. reflecting off the water. Yeah, and... it's generally calmer at night, you know, not as windy sometimes. It's obvious, but it's something I hadn't really thought of before, and obviously now I've got one of these super bright Nash lights that you can go and <laughs> yeah, you know, check right. your spots in the yeah. edge at night, and yeah, it's a game changer, really. Yeah, like lamping them up and stuff, you know? Yeah, I haven't yeah. really done much of that. No, I haven't there, really. Just, for just, you know, being able to see what bait's left on the spot mm. that you couldn't see. Yeah, and it's like, you know, it's all that homework kind of stuff, isn't it? You put the effort in, you get it primed up, you know, priming up areas and stuff. You might spend a few weeks, a few days or a, or a few months doing it, but then you'll know when it's ready. And when it's ready, that's, you know, you sort of reap the rewards and it's, it's, it's almost like the end of it then, isn't it? But that is that point in between, isn't it, really? It's like, you know, like they say, like, like it's the journey rather than the finish. I know we all want to finish, don't we? But <laughs> it's, it's the bits in between that matter, really. So, yeah, I mean, you've obviously, you know, been in the scene a long time and fishing Conningbrook and whatever, you fished alongside some of the biggest kind of characters and yeah, sort of yeah. best anglers in the game. Um, any particular ones that stand out or, that, you know, you've been good friends with over the years? Yeah, loads. There's, there's like so many, you know. I've been really privileged to meet so many of the old boys over the years and so many, um, like, you know, sort of big names in the game, so, so to speak, and all that. They're, yeah, I've been really fortunate enough to like glean a, a lot of information and knowledge off of, the, off of, the, of a lot of these guys, and um, you know I'll be forever grateful for that. But yeah, there was a, there was a lot of them. You know I can't really pull forward, pick out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Paul, the likes of Paul. You know, bless him, God rest his soul. Good friend of his, weren't you? Yeah, he's obviously, you know everyone like Paul, like, like everyone, everyone loved Paul to bits. Legend, wasn't he? Yeah, absolute real legends. Yeah, you know, it's not yeah, like time, it's some like the influence that man had over like so many of us. You know, and it'll, that'll rebound forevermore. You know, it won't. It's not like some five-minute thing. I like, you know, forget. You know, you'd never forget Paul once you'd met him, and and how just how he was and stuff. He's like so influential on on a lot of us. Yeah, and you know, especially my fishing and that from back in the day. Especially, he's like we said earlier. Like, there's a lot of things. And I sort of talked about this before, like he sort of said to me, like there's a lot of things just to forget about and just get out, you know, don't worry about all of these things, like rigs and bait, you know, don't get me wrong, good bait's good bait, but it's more about following your instincts and going along with what, you know, watercraft and all that and, and, and finding them. You go, it's like, like Dick Walker and that shit, you know, you've got to first find your fish, isn't it? you can't catch what ain't there. And that's the, like one of the biggest keys, and it probably, it doesn't cost you anything, does it? That's it. You just make all that off your own back. And that's, you know, that is what angling is really all about, isn't it? But yeah, the likes of Paul, um, yeah, Jacko, Brownie, Watto, Cy, Ozzy, loads and loads of them. I could think, you know, I could just sit here forever reeling them off. <laughs> but um, they all had, they've all had their own little thing with me, their own little, sort of glean a bit from each and every one of them. And it, it goes both ways, I suppose. But yeah, I've been really like lucky like that. But yeah, with, with, with um, you know, like Paul, like, F, he's going to leave a big old hole in carp fishing. You know, forward by name, forward by nature. He didn't really mince his words, Paul, ever with anyone. And um, but he was such a character, such um, maybe it's like that northern element coming out in him or whatever. But he was never really. You wouldn't ever say he was ever wrong about anything, or like any kind of arrogance. He was just direct, you know. And then that's maybe that's lacking in this modern days. In these modern days, you know, modern times and that, people, you know, just so up front. Too many snowflakes. Yeah, well, exactly <laughs> that, yeah. But what can you do, you know? But yeah, he's a um, real interesting guy as well, such a talented angler, just like naturally gifted. And, he, you know, he had that upbringing with the match, sort of fishing in the rivers and all, all that sort of, like, you know, and he, he really taught me, yeah, taught me a lot. And, and a lot of other people, a lot of stuff, yeah, he's a... Gentleman as well. Gentleman, he? yeah, 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 massive, like, you know, he's a... Real, real, like, just like clever, genuine 
cool guy, really. Yeah. Yeah, he'd be sorely missed, that is for sure. Unfortunately, you know, unfortunately. Oh mate, another quiet and cold night, wasn't it? Yeah, it was cold, wasn't it? Again. But, yeah, it's right, mate. Sun will be out soon, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to be out. be a nice warm day today. But yeah, I didn't stay up too late last night. I was up to about 11, but didn't hear any. Um, you said you heard one at yeah, one point. Yeah, I stayed up a bit late. I heard a good, good one down there, between me and um, sand down there. Yeah, that sounded all right, that. So, you know, a bit of hope, maybe. And then this morning, once again, I was up at half five and saw one poke its head out in that far corner um, and there has been you know there's some old bubbles in that on the surface over there um, yeah it looked like there's a few there didn't there yeah well I shot round there and there was one still bubbling so I did go and grab a rod dropped it in there for sort of 40 minutes but I think literally even just lowering that rig into place yeah, spooked, spooked them out. Find a little corner of that in it. You just drop that in there. It might just be enough to send them on their way, like you know. An hour early, I reckon I would have had a much better chance, you know. But I just think I missed the party. Yeah, it's all good time of day as well, isn't it? There's almost probably just finishing up, maybe down there. Yeah, I mean to be fair, like there's been very little activity around the whole lake, hasn't there? It's been yeah, calm it's this, like morning. this morning. This morning, it's calm. Like I say, we can see everything. And the fact that those bubbles are still on the surface because the the air temperature is so cool, would you know, if if they'd been feeding elsewhere, then there'd be signs of that elsewhere as well, wouldn't there? But there yeah. just hasn't been. So uh, we're still in with a chance, though. I think. I think, like you know, mate, you had that one. To about this time, wasn't it? Just, uh, yesterday, bit, maybe a little bit later. Yeah, and then the other one, sort of, what was that? Sort of early afternoon. Yeah. Like one and a half, one, two o'clock, maybe. Yeah. So, yeah, mate, this is plenty of, and that's in quite deep water from, from what I gather out there. So, like, there's still plenty of uh, opportunity. Just got to keep the faith, haven't we, mate? Yeah, of course. Definitely. Always. <laughs> but, yeah, it looks alright, though, mate. We'll, we'll find it, we'll find something in a little while once that's cloud burns off I reckon. Yeah well we'll have this brew and then maybe I'll knock up some uh, breakfast rolls. Yeah 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 I've got some mushrooms but I don't know if we're allowed them yet. <laughs> I've got, yeah that's it, got to catch one to have them yeah. Um, and then yeah we'll uh, chew the fat a little bit more. Yeah no worries mate. Thanks. Sweet. Oi, oi, Savaloi. Well, just sitting up in John's swim, lapping up this glorious sunshine on this lovely spring day, and one of my rods has gone. Uh, it just started a bit jittery to start with, and then just absolutely ripped off. And obviously, it's only about 25 yards up the bank, but by the time I got here, Bobbin was wedged in the alarm, and it was ripping off into the lake. Just had a, a good old scrap with it. Did try and film it, but unfortunately, uh, yeah, we weren't recording at the time. <laughs> It's a trouble when uh, when I'm playing the fishing, you know, my mind's set on this and uh, yeah, it's easily, easy to make little mistakes like that. So we haven't got any of the fight, but most important thing is we've got a carp in the net and it's a banger as well. Somewhere between 25 and 30 pound, I reckon. But it has been a while since I've caught one, so I might be uh, overestimating that a bit. But yeah, buzzing. Right, let's have a little look at him then. Sweet. <laughs> So this one is known as, what is it? Rasta uh, Lookalike. Rasta Lookalike. And it's one of the older ones, by all accounts. And there we go, mega, mega creature. Got to be a little bit careful because I've still got my dodgy shoulder. <laughs> no 40 pounders for me for the next couple of months. <laughs> but yeah, lovely way to uh, be welcomed back to the UK. First trip out with the rods. Mega upper 20 from a lovely lake. Thank you very much to uh, Kent Wildflowers, Fowlers even, <laughs> for letting us down here to have a little go. 
Muchas gracias. Well, that's a little bit exciting, isn't it? Yeah, that was good, mate, wasn't it? That old 11-11 spot. Yeah, it's mental, that. isn't it? Yeah. Old universe. I had a flick around and like that was the first spot I found when I was a cast out. Yeah. Uh, clipped it up and then cast around to the left to where I'd seen that fish the day before. And first cast hit the clip on you know on the same clip. Yeah, yeah, crack, same distance. And it was only a spot about that big. I didn't have it on off that one, I had it off the right hand one, but it was a slightly raised bit. Um, and yeah, when I wrapped him out, it was exactly 11. Yeah, and, uh, same, mental, isn't it? I said to you, didn't I? Yeah, I'll see one there this morning as well, didn't I? Yeah, and it was good, yeah, it was good wicked, mate, wasn't it? One of the old ones. Wicked. Proper yeah, one. Proper. Old Rasta lookalike, they call it, isn't it? I think. It yeah. was that, mate. Yeah, it was good. Nice. Just a bit under 30 pounds. Can ask for more, really? Nice, no, it. Well, maybe one more, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Um, there was one that out one there, wasn't it, a while ago? Yeah, there was. And one show, I'm pretty sure it's the same one that showed out close, you know, close from here. I think it went across the other side and jumped again, so... Yeah, give a couple more hours, see what happens. Take to ourselves now, don't we? Oh, no, sorry. Our mate is over there, and that's, about, that's it, though. It's nice and quiet, isn't it? There's a few fish started showing as well in the last couple of hours, isn't there? Cool. Right, well, um, yeah, I thought we'd sort of touch on a couple of other little subjects. Um, <laughs> Fish quite a lot of big pits, haven't you, over the years? Yeah, like, yeah, a few, yeah. Obviously, that doesn't apply to everyone because it's a, a kind of small percentage of people who do that kind of fishing. But for the people that do, um, what are sort of things, key things you'd say you've learned from, you know, being able to get out there and... Oh, with the boat fishing? Yeah, I don't know. It's just so many little things. It opens your eyes. It's like, it's like the, whole, the lake becomes a whole different world then. You know, you realise how... Um, not inadequate, but you know, you sort of realise how um, you're not really quite doing it as well as you imagine casting from the bank. Once you go and you know you do that, and then you go and have a look in the boat, so it's quite good for if you can do that sort of um, boating around, looking at the spots on the lake you're allowed to fish. You can, um, you know, one of the best things that I'd recommend is um, you know go out just fish as normal as you would from the bank pop up your float or whatever and cast your rigs out in the normal kind of baiting pattern and then go out there and have a look at how it really looks like as opposed to what it looks like in your mind when you're doing it because you know a lot of the time it can be a lot lot different to what you imagine. You've got this pretty little picture in your head. Yeah exactly that and you think it's all on some tight little spot and you go out there and it's strewn everywhere which might you know that might not be a bad thing necessarily but um, yeah I've learned a lot of things with the boat fishing like a lot of the, sometimes you don't really need as much bait as you imagine. Like a little story we sort of touched upon earlier, wasn't it? Like um, where the fish were feeding on top of this bar where I put a lot of bait and all that, and then I sort of never had the bite and they got away with it. And then I realised, you know, the error of my ways and um, put the bait back down the next week when I got back in the same condition, same spot, dropped that back down and um, off the side of the bar this time, only a handful of bait. And that was, um, you know, and that brought me the result of one of them two fish that was there the week previous, so changing things up slightly and, and learning why, yeah, you know, that helped and that was that capture. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known that otherwise. Right. And I wouldn't have known that if I wasn't being able to go out in the boat and see what had gone on on the spot that week before, like, you know. Because they eating all the bait off the top and just it had done me, basically. But down the side, they're thinking it has all sort of rolled down the edge and you know, a bit more natural sort of thing, you know. So, yeah, that worked out well. Um, that's like softer spots to, you know, like... Yeah, yeah, that's another thing as well. You sort of think, oh yeah, sort of like smooth, smooth silk, quite firm. You know, you get a sort of semi-soft drop and you think, oh yeah, that's all right. But then if you lower it out, you know, if you're lowering it down from the boat and you can see your rig just off the bottom and then, you know, your legs are a few inches off the bottom and then you sort of let it go right down. It'll disappear into the silk sometimes and you right. look, look link, everything just disappears, you know. So and I wonder how many times that really happens. Yeah, a lot probably. So, yeah, there's a lot of things to learn with the boat fishing and that. All right, guys. We're on a bit of a busy pathway here, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> mate, there's a few people turn up, isn't it? The a bit of a local was... celebrity. Yeah, we know, I know most of them. <laughs> so it's all all right, you know. But, yeah, they're all right, good old boys. Generally all down here. They all know the deal. They're all sound enough. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Where were we talking about boat oh, the fishing? Boating, and... Yeah, that was it. Um, sort of any, any little yeah, any things little that you things learned that you could boating. pass on. I remember like another good little trick with the boating was, um, you know, like you go out there and it's windy, a bit like now, like out there at the moment, there's a bit, fair bit of ripple in there, it's all sort of silvery. 
I know like these days, you know, they'll poke their head over the edge with them cones and all that, don't they? And, but I always used to have a, um, a like a long bait bucket, not very round one, but a long one, and I'd just cut the bottom out of it, no glass, no nothing, just cut the bottom straight out of it. And then, like, when, when you're looking over, you poke it through the, through the surface of the water and, it, you know, it all comes calm in there. And if you've got, like, a little mouthful of bait and everything, you just sort of spit it out over the spot accurately. <laughs> You know, and it'll fall through the bucket straight on the thing. <laughs> and you can sort of see everything. You'd, I'd wedge it on my head, you know. I'd, I'd crush it enough, like, put it in shape, and it'd end up sticking on your head. You just sort of poke it through, like, you know, and then you can lower the rig down. You're not trying to hold the bucket. You can sort of still keep moving about and that. Nice. So that was quite a cool little thing. And, um, yeah, with the oil as well, when it's like this with the, with the sheen on it, and it's, oh, it's really windy and stuff, it, you know, you can sort of poke your head over and you find your spots, you sort of drop the marker straight away. She, she sort of know you're on it sort of thing. And then, uh, by the way, sort of row back downwind of it. And sort of, I've got, I used to have this little bottle of just like vegetable oil, that's all. And you'd only need like two or three sprays out of the boat on the surface and on the right wind line. And it'd follow it down and then it'd open up and it'd create this great big sort of flat spot in amongst the silvery kind of wind. And it, it's just like opening a window, you know, you could sort of see as you're going along, you could sort of see this great big 20 foot radius Because it also circle. Like pushes fluff and Yeah, way, and it pushes it? All, all the stuff away and it sort of allows you to see through it, you know. And you sort of see that thing, oh, I'm coming up to my marker and like you, you get ready and just sort of drift in and get it all lined up and drop it down. Yeah, so that, that oil thing was always quite a, quite a good little trick. So a lot of these big pits are windy all the time, you know. Yeah, going back to what you said before about, um, you know, casting out as you would and going and checking it. Yeah. So from that, what did you change? Did you change anything or was it just, you know? Yeah, because um, I've never really used like leg clips and stuff if I'm fishing silty stuff, it's always helicopters, but I'd, I'd normally, you know, after looking at how soft a lot of that silt was, unless you get them feeding on a spot for quite a while and it, you know, obviously it naturally gets pushed out of the way and it becomes harder, but them first fresh sort of silty spots, them first goes, if you want to get the rod out quick and the fish are about sort of thing, you just set the stop so much higher than you'd imagine. You know, a good two foot for the bottom bead and then, you know, another foot or whatever for the top bead. And just, like, so I use quite relatively short rigs anyway, so they don't really tangle on the way down or anything. And you'd do that and you'd watch, you know, you'd watch, um, you'd watch a lot of the leader disappear and then, you know, a good couple of foot. It's amazing how deep it is. You know, a lot of things were like 20 inches before you'd hit the harder bit of the silt. But yeah, not, not knowing that, casting out, you'd just cast out and, you know, your bait would be hidden up. And that must, that must be happening quite a lot to a lot of people. But maybe that's, you know, it might not, it might not necessarily be a bad thing. In some situations. In some situations. Most you know, of the time you want to be able to see that They're bait, digging you know? around and they get to the bottom and there's something, you know, they eat it, wouldn't they? But, Oh, it's not ideal. No. I wouldn't want my bait that hidden up, you know. Especially that's when you reel them in and they stink all black and horrible. Like, wow. Oh. Especially when you're fishing the sort of less pressured pits, because yeah. you're not kind of having to worry too much about them being riggy, are you? Or, no. Um, you just want them to, you know, you want that bait presented and you want them to be able to see it ideally, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to make sure it's fishing effectively all the time. But then that's, you know, that allows you to do that. And the other way you can gauge, like with the boat and that, and dropping down the lead and stuff, you know, you've got your normal like lead on a on a like a I used to have on like film canisters or even like a little mini H block thing. Throw it down there and it'd unwind and then you'd pick it up and see you could try and to try and gauge how deep the silt was, what you'd do, you can just you can just like tie a length of wool on. Yeah, so you know, like say three like foot that. white wool, real pure white stuff, tie it on, and then tie your lead on. And you you know you'd you'd lower it all down again and you'd feel the hard a bit in the silt and you might pull it up and it'd be, you know, all grey and horrible about that far up or something. And you'd know exactly how deep the silt is then. So yeah, that was always quite a cool little thing. Yeah. Yeah, so but yeah, the boating does open your eyes, yeah, for sure. So what are the best spots that you're looking for? What are you trying I to don't find? Know. It all depends, doesn't it? it? You know, it's so changeable, so variable. I, I, the clay spots are good. Because I've heard people talking before about fishing from boats. It's not something I've done that much, but they say they're looking for like the freshest, newest little. Yeah, spot yeah. Pro and disturbed. I suppose this day and age, you know, save like Stone Acres or something where they're all out there in a boat and it's, they've got to try and do something a bit different. It's not like going on some 
lightly fished pit and you sort of find the clear spot and a nice little spot to the side, that'll do. They've got, you know, everyone's doing that up there, I should imagine. You, you want to find something a little bit niche, don't you? But you can't really say what that is until you sort of find it yourself. Depends what the fish are doing. You know, I might see them jumping out and then you row out there when it's calmed down later on in the morning and have a look at what they're jumping over or what they're up to. They might just be bashing a load of silt where you. There might not even be a spot out there, you know. But yeah, it's, it's, it's hard, but it's a definite eye opener, that boat. Yeah, for sure. But I don't think you should rely on it all the time. It's, just, it's a good thing to use, like we said at the start of this thing about the boating, like you know, should own it. Hone your um, casting skills with it, really. You're fishing from the bank normally and then work out how you could make that better mm. by going out and looking how it looks like from the boat, you know. Yeah. So it's, just, yeah, it's a lot to be learnt with the old boat, for sure. But there again, you know, I never used an outboard or anything like that. And generally, in my, my sort of fishing, the lighter I go, the better. And I don't, you know, I don't necessarily need one a lot of the time. But, um, you know, there is a skill to all of that. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, yeah, again, you've got to be so careful. The skill only comes with doing yeah, it, with experience, it, with practice. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, you've got to be careful, man. Get the life jacket on always and stuff. Yeah, make sure you're... Um, pretty safe about it all because you know accidents do happen don't they unfortunately but yeah I'll sort of miss a bit of the old boat fishing but mm. you've got to be careful with it you can think you need it all the time you need to be out there it's the same looking with, around doing it you, you don't really same with uh, remote boats in it people start yeah. using them and they think that's the only way they can yeah and then they can never go back you know and they've got no confidence in casting out and just leaving it and fishing how you normally would. I mean, it's horses for courses, and everyone does what they want to do, really, end of the day, don't they? Mm. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I was not saying I really ever want to rely on, even if I could use a boat or some water, a bit of both. And a lot of the time as well, these lakes, really, you know, they're always being fished by people using the boat. I've seen it before, it sort of goes full circle, you know. A lot of people start getting successful by not using the boat, casting out a single when they're jumping around and there's, where there's no boat traffic. You get away with that cast a lot easier than what you would going out there with the boat and the outboard and all of that. And then they're just off again, you know. So yeah, there's a lot to be said for casting around still on a heavily boat pressured lake. Talking of which, you've just seen a couple show, haven't you? Do you want to uh, yeah. move a rod onto them? Um, I'm not going to move that one right now, but I have moved one already. Right. Yeah, yeah, that other one that showed here and then, you know, over there further, I've got I put a rod on that. That went down all right. Sweet. So yeah, that's, hopefully that might rattle off still, we'll see. Fingers crossed. How's the air looking? You have to excuse the old grey bar on it. God, it's getting bad, isn't it? <laughs> right, time to wrap it up. Um, just before we go, I've just reeled my rod in, so I just thought I'd show you. Even though you all know what a spinner rig looks like, um, this is how I use it. 20 pound IQ, size four, wide gape, and all the usual little bits and pieces, little kicker on there, hook bead. IB, the old faithful, down to a anti-tangle sleeve and then a fox lead clip which has got the pin taken out of it. So obviously that just turns it into a running setup. And like I say, you know, as well as being able to fish a super slack line and still get really good indication, um, it also means that you don't have to drop the lead every time because it's unnecessary unless you really need to. We don't need to be polluting the lakes with loads of leads for no reason, do we now? Um, no tubing, no leader, just straight through to the fluorocarbon mainline. I do like using the naked setup, reason being, obviously fluorocarbon has got the same sort of light refractions as water, so once it's sitting on the bottom, it's almost impossible to see. And you know, all these tubings and lead core leaders and everything, you put them in the edge and they stand out like a sore thumb. And same goes for sort of coated hook link materials. And just to give you a real quick example um, of why fluorocarbon can make such a big difference, I remember Steve Renyard when he was fishing on, uh, what's it called, Wellington Country Park. He was fishing there and everyone was using coated hook links and he decided to change over to fluorocarbon and no one was getting bites in the daytime. And as soon as Steve started to use fluorocarbon hook links, he started to get bites in the daytime. And there's another example, actually a real good one, was Martin Bowler, who's fishing like a 
really clear stretch of river for barbel and he was able to just drop his rig in and pull it out really easily without making any disturbance so he could change his rig materials pretty easily and he said exactly the same he said a coated braid if I put it down there the fish would come in feed around it and move off he said if I change it to a fluorocarbon hook link fish would come in and I'd nail them so there there you go perfect example of why blending in can make a massive difference to your results Right, it's time to do the walk of pain. I'm already aching from walking the kit around the last couple of days, so um, it's gonna hurt, but thankfully I caught one, so I've got a smile on my face and it won't be such a painful walk after all. Lovely times. Right, it's been an enjoyable trip with John. Very interesting angler um, who's caught a huge amount of fish. Likes to keep himself to himself and do his own bits and pieces. So yeah, thanks for coming on the show, John, and I'm sure we'll catch up again soon. Right, let's get out of here. So another one of my fishing stitch-ups, while I was filming the Great Escapes with um, Ridge Monkey, I was fishing with Big Jay and um, they'd made a pig's dick curry. And um, while we was making the curry, they said, look, Dan, he's going to have a normal chicken curry, but you're getting a pig's dick curry because we've got to let Dan will a challenge because he's a bit of a pussy. Anyway, while they had their backs turned, I took all the pig dicks out of my curry and put them in Jay's. <laughs> As it goes, he didn't eat much of it till he was nearly throwing up anyway. So I thought that ain't enough. So when they'd bought all these guts and things from a butcher's, this is Port Ridge Monkeys, a sicko, they'd left half a pig's head in a bag. So I've gone down to Jay's bivvy, unzipped his bed chair and I've put it in the middle of it and zipped it up. And I thought when he goes to sleep, he'll open it up, see the head and go mad not remembering that this 20-odd stone geese is going to come back and sit on his bed chair. So he sat it, completely split the bag. He's got guts, eyeballs and everything in his sleeping bag. Yeah, he weren't very happy. He was like 200 yards away and I could hear him go, let me! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, 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 well, Joe Bloggs fishing in the moment is back. Um, just got down to Long Reach and yeah, I've sort of, it's been a northeasterly blow in the last few days and I thought, oh, they might not be on that because, um, you know, it's been, a, it's an old wind and at this time of year, I think the fish kind of generally want to be in the warmer areas. Um, so I expect them to kind of be on the back of the wind, but today the wind's got up, up to about 20 miles an hour and I stood on the uh, corner by the, speedboat bay um, and yeah literally within about 10 minutes I'd seen two splashes I couldn't actually see if they were carp or not but I stood there a bit longer and then saw another one out of the corner of my, my eye and again I wasn't 100% sure but normally if there's bream in the area um, then there's carp in the area and there's obviously something going on out here so um, yeah I've loaded my barrow got up to this swim where I thought they were roughly and I've seen two since being here already and both of them 100% carp so yeah I've got a proper buzz on three rods there all ready to go single look baits IBs spinners yeehaw right let's get them out there because uh, this is a prime little window of opportunity that you don't come across that often on this day so wish me luck yo 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 right rods are out not sure what the old sound will be like on this uh, GoPro mic with this wind but hopefully it's okay yeah, got one out where I saw the last fish show. Uh, that's probably at about 40 yards, something like that. And it got quite a deep drop on it, probably about 12 foot. So it's obviously not on the bars. And the other two have dropped at about 30, 40 yards. Um, and they're in about eight foot of water. So they've landed on, there's, there's a few different bars out here and they kind of go up and down. So yeah, to be in eight foot of water, I know that I'm on a shallower area. Not as shallow as it gets out here, but a bit more shallow than the 12 foot so um yeah i didn't want to be whipping the water to a foam just wanted to get some single hook baits out there roughly in this zone um a couple of different depths and yeah a few different areas feels good feels absolutely bang on buzzing look at this yeehaw Well, that didn't take very long at all. We're in. I'm going to pass the camera to Tom. Hello, Tom. Mate, do the honours, mate. Lovely. Bro. It's all right, bro. 
Ooh, got a bit of weight to it as well. How long has that been? About half hour. Lovely. Right, Nearly on them limit with them waders, mate. Really? Is it? Is it? Quality. <laughs> oh mate, that is mad. That is so mad. I've netted this fish or taken pictures of this fish four times for other people. And I almost was like got to the point where I was like, do you know what? I don't even know if I want to catch it anymore. <laughs> I always thought I'm gonna need a lot of bait for that one, you know, it's a bait fish, that's why I'm not catching it. Single look bait in the right place. Mental. Well done, bro. Happy days. Yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> Buzzing. Not even half hour. I don't believe that. I'm that's really fucking quality. It. That is very Mega good. conditions as well. <sighs> right. Yeah. Madness! Woo -hoo -hoo. Big old belly, big carp, mega scales. Look at her. Well, it's nice to finally see you. She's big. She's really big. Uh oh, it's gonna do my shoulder. <laughs> oh mate, buzzing beyond belief. Seven twelve. Really? Yeah, yeah. 47. Wow. Forty-seven twelve. Holy moly. <laughs> yeah, gut is pretty big. <laughs> She's massive. Absolutely massive. Yeah. She's, she is a big old girl. Wow. Well, well, well. Forty-seven. 47.12, absolute unit of a carp. One of the queens of the pond. As you can see, she's not very happy. Come on, girl. Whew. 
Look at the size of that. Monster carp, just how we like them. Been fishing here a few years now, and this one's always managed to avoid me. And now I finally got my moment. Mega old creature, horse of a carp. Buzz, proper buzz. It's got a mad little uh, scar on the top here, which is strange. Now it's got that. We'll get that treated before we get her back. Ah, lovely jubbly. Give myself a little break. I don't know about her. Oh, that now. Oh, it's a bit of afternoon fishing. <laughs> I'll go slightly. Good man. Well rescued. <laughs> She's yeah. well ready to go back, isn't she? Yeah. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Beautiful, beautiful. Mega, mega creature. From an amazing lake. Bye, girl. Thank you very much. Oh, blimey governor. Well, what a way to kick off the old diary piece again. Oh, absolutely unbelievable. Um, just been chatting for, with Tom for the last sort of two hours or so since the capture. Sort of calmed down a little bit, but now I've just had a little uh, caffeine injection. It's brought the old adrenaline right back up again. But yeah, a little backstory for you. I've actually arranged to do a bit of filming with Terry Dempsey this week, which was meant to be today. I rang Terry last night and he said, oh, I've had a few things change and I'm not going to be able to get down the lake till later on tonight and it's going to be there for two nights. So I said, well, I was going to go up to Cambridge after spending 24 hours with you. And the main reason I was coming up here was actually to catch up with Tommy DeClean, who is a, an old friend, met him many years ago when I worked for Corder and sort of kept in contact since. And he's also a follower of Carp Angle and he's always supported the show financially with subscriptions, contributions should I say, and he's also quite often shares it on Instagram and whatever, I've plugged it. So I um, thought well it'd be nice to catch up with Tommy and also do a little bit of filming with him, you know, sort of talk about him coming to England to fish and what he does in Belgium and whatever. So I thought well I'll shoot up for 24 hours, um, but on the way up here it sort of felt pretty bang on, you know, so I thought right, well before I go and see Tommy, maybe I'll go and see him tomorrow. I thought before I go and see him, I'm going to go and have a little look about first. Um, and Longreach was obviously my first stop. And stood on the end of the, uh, uh, sort of, well, in the bay here, on the end of the lake, sort of where the car park is. So you've got a good view from there. Once you sort of start walking along this lake, your, your view is quite limited. And yeah, after about five minutes, I saw something splash. I thought, oh. I don't know, is that, is that a carp? Hmm, don't know, I wasn't sure, could have been a bream. Then five minutes later, another similar thing, just out of the corner of my eye, I saw a splash. Out in this area, probably only, a, uh, well, I could see it, it was roughly a couple of swims up from down there. Um, so, yeah, and then a the third one, I thought, right, well, that's good enough for me, even though I hadn't seen that they're 100% carp. Quite often in here, when the bream are sort of active, the carp can be too, and they were obviously on the end of this wind, which had picked right up this morning. 
So, come round to this swim, sat here watching for sort of 15, 20 minutes and saw one at about 70 yards out, just slightly to the right and shortly after that a real big one showed just out to the left here at about 40 yards. So, flicked two rods onto them and then another one just out into the middle, um, in the middle of the swim but just on one of the first bars. And yeah, I think the rods were only out there for about half an hour or so before I had a bit of a funny drop back on the left hand rod. And at first I thought, well, is that a liner? But it sort of dropped back and then started tightening up a little bit and then dropped back a little bit. I thought, yeah, something's definitely going on there. And as I got down the slope and got to it, that was when it started to uh, really tighten up. And yeah, I could feel it was a, a heavy fish throughout the fight. Um, but yeah, I wasn't really expecting it to be that one. And you know, as I mentioned before, that fish is just one of the few that's known to like a bit of grub in this lake. You know, it quite often gets caught over pre-baited spots or a fair bit of boilies. Um, so I thought, well, perhaps that's why I've not caught it over the years, you know, and maybe I've got to start targeting that particular fish with a bit more grub. But lo and behold, the old uh, single IB in the right place on a spinner has once again produced the goods. The old faithful tactics, confidence tactics. Um, yeah, so I've seen a couple more since. It quietened down for sort of an hour and a half or so, but then we saw three out here. So I've repositioned two of the rods, um, sort of more into that sort of zone where they were showing, or one of them bang on top of one of the shows, and the other one just a bit more out in front, because it almost looked like the way they were showing, they might have been moving out. So I thought maybe I can intercept them on their way out with a rod. Um, but yeah, sticking with the singles, not going to put any baits out there. I think uh, um, that's you know, a massive edge in itself. All their focus and attention is on that bright yellow thing and they want to know what it is. They go down to find out what it is and uh, yeah, they nail themselves. So confidence again. Right, I think I'm going on a bit here, and I? <laughs> Buzzing. I'm going to enjoy the moment. <sighs> Cheers, universe. Skills. <laughs> Yo, 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 guten morgen. Um, yeah, I went to sleep about half 12 last night. I heard one just before I went to sleep, actually. Came out twice, not far from where I was fishing. And then I didn't expect the fish to stay up here last night. So I normally move back to the middle, but I have actually seen a fair few this morning down this zone, uh, spread about a bit. But yeah, probably six or seven carp, a few tench and a few bream, so quite hopeful actually that there's a chance of a uh, another bite not being greedy but yeah gotta make hay whilst the sun shines isn't it? and then those little windows appear you gotta make the most of them um, so yeah I'll give it till early afternoon I reckon that's a nice pleasant morning the sun is out which is very welcome because it's been pretty chilly all night this cold northeasterly wind's got a bit of a bite to it so um, yeah a bit of sunshine is very welcome. Right, I think I need a turbo coffee. Lovely day. Come on a friendly. Oh, I don't think it's been out for about seven years now, so uh, yeah, it's definitely not very friendly. Yo, 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 my name is Joe, and this is the end of another show. <laughs> But before I go, there's a few things you've got to know. So sit back and let me go with a flow. <sighs> Where's it come from? Cuckoo, cuckoo. Talking of cuckoo, it's about that time of year, isn't it? Any time now, I reckon. Um, right, yeah, that is the end of another show, but I've got a little bit of waffle for you before I go, so don't switch off just yet. Um, first of all, one of the reasons why I started Carp Angle was to be able to share good information and get that good information out there to as many people as possible, stuff that could potentially be life-changing. Um, and you might think, what, life-changing? Well, just to give you an example, we talked about CBD oil in the past, and CBD oil has loads of benefits um, for like anxiety, nerve issues, arthritis, um, 
epileptic fits and seizures etc um, and we talked about this in the past with Adam Penning and gave a couple of really good examples now someone watching the show their son had a football accident and banged his head or something um, and the doctors basically he was getting seizures and the doctors didn't have any answers for him they said look I'm not sure what's up and we don't know how to fix it um, and obviously he was suffering from these seizures and it was having a pretty poor quality of life as a result of that so um, his parents had seen the show and they said look you know we've got nothing to lose why well, don't we give the CBD oil a go and they gave it a go and it stopped his seizures so there you go a life-changing bit of information um, aside from that I've had a lot of people contact me to say that they've you know, had really good results with it with uh, anxiety um, which is something that you know I found it really helpful for in the past as well. So yeah, if you are suffering from any of these things or you do know people are suffering from any of these things, then recommend CBD oil to them. Um, ideally, you want to get it in sort of a 5,000 milligram bottle. Um, some of these weaker ones, you know, 1,000 milligrams or whatever, they're, they're not very strong and they don't do as good a job. So yeah, try and find a one with 5,000 milligrams in each bottle. Um, right, aside from that, what else did I want to say? Oh yeah, so another thing that I've found really kind of life changing um, for myself personally, for my health in the past, was papaya. Now, this might sound a bit odd to you, but in the past I've suffered a lot from acid reflux, and particularly on my travels, at one point I um, had sort of ended up with esophagitis because I had so much acid reflux, uh, ended up causing like a lump in my throat. And I met a guy one day after suffering with this for about eight weeks, I met a guy at a bar and he said to me, look, you want to try papaya? He said, have a teaspoon of the seeds each day and a glass of juice, papaya juice, just blend it up with a bit of ice. Um, and I've done that and after three days I noticed a difference and after a week it was cleared up completely. And I looked into it and yeah, by all accounts, papaya has got loads of good stuff in it, which is great for your gut. So if you have gut issues and you have acid reflux, then get yourself to uh, a local kind of grocery shop and get yourself one of these. It costs about fiver, but you know it's worth its weight in gold. Amazing stuff. Right, next up, <laughs> um, prizes. So yeah, after this, there'll be a list of the people who've won a prize in the last few months on the carp angle draw, those people who've contributed five pounds or more. And then for this month, um, we've got a couple of different prizes for you. I've got some urban baits um, package deal. So we've got 20 kilos of boilies, two tubs of pop-ups and a bottle of liquid. And this is something that they're starting to do now because it's the time of year when people are stocking up their freezers and also going to France. So they've set up this deal, like I say, 20 kilos of boilies, two tubs of hook baits, one bottle of liquid, and that's 140 quid. So if you're looking to stock up your freezer with a quality bit of bait, then uh, yeah, get yourself on the Urban Baits website and uh, order yourself some of that. Or contribute five pounds towards Carp Angle and you may win yourself one of them anyway. <laughs> um, right, aside from that, we've also got a Carp Life bird torch to give away. Now these things are an absolute game changer. If you've not got one in your kit, then I highly recommend you get one because no one wants birds picking up their rigs and ruining their presentation. So even in the night, sorry, even in the daytime, these torches will get rid of the birds for you. Amazing bits of kit. So yeah, massive thank you to those who contribute towards the show and keep it going. There's literally only a couple of hundred a month, even though you know it's like 50,000 to 100,000 viewers each month. Um, someone did actually say to me, oh, you should get some um, merch done and then that'll be an incentive for people to contribute. So obviously the information, inspiration and entertainment isn't enough for that. <laughs> so I've actually had some little carp angle key rings made up. Now these are carved out of coconut, handmade, um, in Indonesia, each one is a work of art. Um, so if you wanted it as a key ring or you wanted to hang it on the rod, you know, bless a lucky rod, because they are all lucky. <laughs> if you want to get your hands on one of them, all you've got to do is make a 20 pound contribution um, via PayPal and put your address on there and I'll send you one of them. There's only 50 of these made, so they are unique. They are limited edition. Um, so if you fancy getting your hands on one of them, all you have to do is make a £20 contribution on PayPal, which the details are below. Right, 
think that's me, Dan. Sorry to waffle on so much. Um, it's actually my birthday in a couple of days as well, my 40th. I know you can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, you probably can with all this grey hair and wrinkles. Um, so yeah, if you wanted another incentive, if you've been watching the show over the last couple of years and you've never contributed, and you think, oh, do you know what? I enjoy that, I'm gonna buy him a drink then uh, you can do so via PayPal. I don't like to do all this capping my hand stuff, but obviously to keep the show on YouTube, it's what I've got to do. So um, yeah, thank you for your support. And I'll be back in four weeks time. Have a lovely month. This is the month of the Whackers. So get out there and bag yourself a chunk. See you next time.